we just call the meeting to order February 11th at the uh, Finance Committee, 6.30, so we'll get started. And I don't really have anything, so David, you can jump right in. Okay. <coughs> I've got two documents here. We uh, passed around the draft warrant last time, uh, but this is uh, now the warrant in its uh, uh, more or less final form and a uh, working document that we can start making some progress on. The deadline for articles has passed, and so I was thinking that we could uh, make some recommendations tonight, particularly having to do with um, the consent agenda, the, the items that are non-controversial. Before we jumped into that, I just wanted to share with you the revenues, the revenue projections for FY21, and just walk through them so that you can admire the Byzantine complexity of municipal accounting. So what would you like it's to take in first? Yeah. Evidence? Mm -hmm. So Hadley revenues are divided into four major groups. The first one is taxation, the second one is state aid, the third one are local receipts, and then finally the enterprise funds. The taxation is formulaic, there's not a whole lot of choice here. So if we look at the far right column, where it says FY 2021 projected. The first number you run into is the tax levy of a million six, uh, no, 11 million and 600,000 and change. That number is arrived at by adding the prior year's tax levy, the two and a half, and the new growth. And so that's a simple addition to come up with 11 million 600,000 and change. That's where that number comes from. Second number is 290,000 and change. That is the 2.5% increase. That's allowed under Proposition 2.5. The next number is 150,000. That represents new growth. And this is an adjustable number. Um, this represents the added value for any new improvement, new building, new treatment, upgrade, anything that involves a building permit. Is it a big drop? It is. Um, a baseline number there would be about $93,000 if nothing in particular was happening and hardly no commercial development. It was all just kitchen renovations and uh, upgrades to garage doors and things like that, the number would be about 93. We're looking at the projects that are coming down the pike right now, and we're thinking somewhere around 150 is where it's going to be. If we get a big project in um, and it's completed in time, that number can shoot up to 200,000 and even higher. And what are the projects that, that are you considering with that 150, the big ones? The big ones, um, well, there's the baseline. Then you have a number of small projects going on, uh, small commercial, small uh, um, residential. You have housing going on in East Street. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have development along Route 9. Um, Is it the hotel that's that they're redoing? Or that you can they're, that's all done. I thought they were redoing another one. Yeah, right, that's two years. What did you say? Two years for the oh, roadway in. It's going to be torn right. down and re redone. So, but, so that we don't see that impact coming Yeah. As we get a little farther into the budget season, I can begin to uh, lighten or expand this number. But right now, this is a good conservative number to start our deliberations. So that, um, oh, so that would be growth in value of right. things so that, yeah. Anything you need, a plumbing permit, electrical permit, gas permit, building permit. The permit fees is what you're referring to? It's not the, the permit fees, it's the, it's tax. the added value to I the see. tax base. Right, then you can raise the assessment. Yep. So 
So that's why it's important for us to catch these builders who build without permits because <coughs> they're taking money away from everybody else. Uh, they run a Google Earth and look at the houses for a See those unregistered pools and the rooms. Driving around. <laughs> they're using that. In California, they use that. Yeah. So the final number, um, one million two hundred and six thousand, that is the debt exclusion that has been approved by voters in prior town meetings. This is for school buses and for land and for buildings and all these kinds of things. And that's a number that Linda supplies. So in that first table of uh, revenues, there's not a whole lot that isn't a formula. Um, the new growth is an estimate based upon our best projections of where the town is going to grow. And may I just add, I, I, I don't want to drag this out very long, oh, but sure. the debt exclusions that are there run for a certain period of time, some of them. Mm -hmm. So they sunset as mm -hmm. they get paid off, so some of them are five year, ten year. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, but then they may be replaced by other items. Yes, yeah, I so. know. And, yeah, uh, it doesn't and, very often go down. And that's why you're keeping it as a separate outside item as opposed to just folding the revenue because it does sunset at some point. Uh, yes, and it's in addition to the other taxation. It's ex it's uh, debt excluded is excluded from what. Um, uh, yeah, it has to be say stay separate. Yes, I think I think you said it right. <laughs> yeah, and you can see how we're trying to keep that impact as stable as possible. Mm -hmm. A million two and the, the variance from one year to year is uh, less than twenty five bucks. <coughs> All right, so the next table is the state aid. And this is rip and read from the materials that I provided for you last time. Uh, this is your money from the state, only counting the income. And uh, when we get to expenses, uh, uh, when I present the budget, you'll see the assessment side of it. But this is governor's budget, rip and read. Table three, starting with the figure of 13,700. This is a category of revenue that we generate for ourselves. This is every dog license, every building permit, every liquor license, every entertainment license, every flea market license, every movie theater license, interest income, penalties, court fines, anything we do that generates money. This is, you're gonna see it here. And there's a couple of big growth figures in here. One is the um, motor vehicle excise. We estimate that's going to be $800,000 this year. Motel is going to be a million dollars. And then our meals excise is going to be somewhere uh, just shy of $400,000 here. Those are the big movers and shakers in that particular. What about the, uh, I see the two marijuana host agreements. Yes. Is there an excise tax or something on cannabis sold, a separate from that? There are two things that we're going to get from cannabis. There's an agreement for an, a payment, an annual payment for five years uh, for each facility, and there's going to be two of them potentially. So saying 50000 per year for each facility. In addition, we get 3% of the tax of the gross revenue. And I don't have any of that money in here because I have no idea right. what their gross revenues are going to be. So I, I'm not even counting that money because that will be found money. So potentially could be good. Yeah. But the other, um, you said there's two. Do we have another one already? application in? Do we know where that's going? There are two applications for the remaining license. One, the select board will decide this on Wednesday night. One is going to be located or is potentially going to be located in the Hampshire Mall. And the other one is going to go in where the uh, Midas store is next between Hampshire Mall and mm -hmm. Howard Johnson's. Oh. Mm -hmm. And we're still evaluating these proposals and making sure that they actually conform to zoning and so forth. I'm meeting with the Hampshire Mall people on Tuesday to find out if they're willing to 
do this or not. So. So you're pretty confident that you're going to get at least one of those. One, you know, one, that we can only take another one because we already have the one, right? right? So, okay, I just was wondering if if uh, we were a little early on counting the second one. But since you already have two applications, that's great. Well, if we have two applications. If the psych board reject them, then I'll take one of the 50000 <laughs> away and we'll be out of balance. Oh, I thought the difference was because one's medical and one's adult use. So, yeah, I have one... Uh, we have a medical establishment opening up with a $50,000 payment. And then the adult use of 50. And uh, I, I'll take it back. I won't subtract 50 if they shoot down the other one because I don't have the. In here. So we yeah. might have it's another 50 oh. potentially yeah. in here, actually. So. Oh, Plus okay. whatever the 3% is. Yep. And any yeah. so gradually increasing okay. munchies being sold in the, in the, <laughs> the cafe <laughs> taxes. Right? <laughs> Your meals tax will go through the roof. <laughs> Where's the medical then? Medical will be at uh, the, the uh, Heirloom Collective or THC. So they have two. They have they two. Have... Split. There'll be a wall between the two oh. sides. Okay. And the medical should be opening up sh shortly. When I say shortly, like next month. Is the 3% uh, sales tax on both medical and or adult? Oh, no, no. Medical, they don't um, pay tax. That kind yeah, of tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only on the adults. Okay. All right, the final category is the enterprise receipts. Okay, so um, the first number is the uh, water receipts. So water bills can go out, water money comes in. That's that, uh, that value should equal the budget for the water department. Uh, the next number is $180,000. That is first of three administrative charges to the enterprise funds for indirect and direct costs uh, and other liability sharing that the water, sewer, and Hadley Media share with the town. So this is a payment to the town for utilizing services that they don't pay for normally, uh, receiving benefits that they don't pay for. So this offsets that hidden cost. And you dropped all three of them, quite a bit. Well, I did. And so this is one of the big levers in the revenue side of the budget is that we have proposed here a major rethinking of the way that we calculated these uh, administrative charges. And it has resulted in about a $100,000 decline in our revenues. Mm -hmm. Should we stay with the old way of doing this, you have an extra $100,000 <coughs> to apply towards the budget. So that's, a, I call these levers. This is a big lever in the, uh, in the budget. And that decision is made by select board or by? Yeah, by select board. And they've made this decision to They have not this. made this decision and we're going to have them make that decision in March. In March. So this is very much an open item here. And the total Total for the enterprise receipts is $2.4 million. Gross revenues, $22 million in change. Board receipts were, went down a, a, a decent amount. Yeah. <coughs> Number 122, select board receipts. We board lost board one board. of the pinball arcades, and we were making a lot of money off of them, so I made that adjustment. <laughs> court, court local fines are down too? Yeah. Just not seeing the revenue to support it and going off to this number. Yeah, you gotta pay for a patrol car very easily that way. <laughs> Get one of those automated lights. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, it's good that you're conservative. I was just yeah. wondering. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so the state yeah. of the budget right now is the balance budget is balanced. Uh, I'm still tinkering with the expenditures and doing the narrative for right up big um, But we're in good shape in terms of the presentable budget. Um, last year, this time, it, we were about $750,000 in the red. Last week, we were about $450,000 in the red, so it felt like a walk in the park <laughs> right, to bring this into trim. But then a cherry sheet could throw all that off, right? A cherry <laughs> sheet could chance throw that could off. Throw that off. Yeah. But for right now, we have a balanced budget, and I'll be presenting that next week. Sure you want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Finally got it under control. He's going to leave us, isn't he? <laughs> you want to dig into this? Sure. Okay. So the 21 articles with a, the additional six applications to CPA in the wings. Um, the first seven articles are the consent agenda and if possible I'd like to ask for your uh, support on these seven items here. Can you just uh, say again why they call it the consent agenda? Well we do it with this one vote at the beginning of the town meeting so that we can get through all of the housekeeping articles, the ones that don't require debate, that are year in and year out. Um, okay. And that way we've uh, I estimate that it takes five minutes per article, so you're saving yourself the half an hour just by taking this in one vote. Mm -hmm. So just to recap, the first article is grants and gifts. This is a housekeeping article to uh, uh, allow us to receive and expend grants and gifts without calling in a, a uh, Tom meeting every time we get something. We got twelve thousand dollars today, so we can use this article to accept and expend that. Okay. Uh, chapter ninety is payments for from the state to us um, for roads and bridges, and it's about three hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars a year. Short-term borrowing in cases where we have a cash management issue. This has never happened, but it's nice to have this tool in our toolbox so that the treasurer, with the permission of the select board, can do short-term borrowing in anticipation of receipts um, within that same fiscal year. Again, this is something that we do just to provide us with some flexibility in case we need it. Article 4 is the cleanup uh, article, both in terms of sweeping up old pots of uh, money for pro uh, projects that are no longer uh, active, as well as trimming up our um, debt uh, uh, statements so that we don't have straight bits of debt authorization cluttering up the chart of accounts. Mm -hmm. um, number five is an extension to the athletic fields over at Hopkins Academy. It has a two year uh, sunset and they were delayed in getting this project off through no fault of their own so they just need this extended and I'm proposing 2022. Maybe the CPA is going to sign off on that so I, I know yeah. that that can, will only be there so long as CPA supports that. Right, right. So why on Article 4, why do you, and you put it in Article, that one, why do you still have it in Article 4? Article 5 shows the, S, the, the playing fields, the STM-16 playing, playing fields there, but you still have it here for, to give back for the 2530. Is there a duplication there? Yeah, there, there, the second one, the 16 and one, yeah. I think so you just needed to it cross out. it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah, you're right. right. So, on the, so sure. page five, we cross it out. All right, so I will make that adjustment. Thank you for catching that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chad. Yeah. <laughs>
Article 6 is the stabilization fund for the filtration system down at the water treatment plant. And just to recap, we have um, 10 filters that filter water down to the level of a virus. Um, and they have a 10-year life uh, uh, span and they, they cost $26. Thousand a piece to uh, replace. So we're putting aside $26,000 a year for 10 years, so we'll have the full replacement cost ready when those things give out. And that comes from water reserves. And then finally, Article 7 is the CPA administrative. This does two things it um, segregates new money into various pots for the purposes required by law, and it sets up a small amount for their administrative costs, such as legal reviews, dues to the uh, CPA coalition, uh, postage, things like that. Uh, typically, this is somewhere between two and uh, $5,000, which comes from CPA funds. I was I can't remember, is it a percentage <coughs> that comes in? I just thought the 25, 25, 25, for some reason I was thinking it was 30, 30, 30 before, or was it different? It was a yeah, different amount. They, they changed it. I think it's 10, 10, 10, actually. That's what I thought when yeah, we talked so yesterday, but then... We're exceeding the minimum requirement by law. But I, it keeps <laughs> changing, so I... Yeah. I <coughs> okay. Where do you... Is that our, our decision? Yeah, no, why do we do CPA. that? Did, CPA. I don't remember voting on... You haven't. Okay. So, but I'm just saving the space for you because we do this every year. No, yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, we, we have to do it. It's just the dollar amount I'm questioning. Not, right. not uh, put it in the buckets, but the dollar amount. Yeah. I almost don't think we want to put... It restricts you, does it? It restricts you when if we can just put it in the... It's still CPA money. As it is, it's restricted. I mean, it's already right. restricted. It's I mean, to restrict it on top of the restrictions is, is tough. I think <laughs> you should discuss it. So I'd rather just do the minimum. Um, so anyways, I, I for the consent agenda, when you ask us to do that here, if I, I'd rather not um, if we could pull out a couple. Sure. Um, just for until the corrections are made, because I'd like to pull out that dollar amount. I'd like to pull out the um, um, the CPA mm -hmm. one, because I'd like to see it if we can make it lower down to the ten. Okay, you gotta talk to your CPA. CPA, about that. yeah. And I guess that, and we already made the other corrections, so I guess that's the only other thing I have. That's the only one I really have. But David, on Article okay. 4, there will be other changes, so if they were to approve it tonight, they would have to re-approve it, right? You have to yeah, pull that yeah. out from, yeah, yeah there's so good, that's, we've got some finessing to do there. Do. Yeah, so okay. there's a little bit of finessing there, but I mean, I, I think the concept is, is the that concept is un unproductive, move it to a productive Absolutely. <coughs> that's true, but if you're going to add something to it, I'd rather, yeah, there will be a, some. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. Okay. You want to put that on hold? I'd like to put that on hold, just in case, you know, just to see. I don't know what would be added. <laughs> yeah. Just, you never know. All right. All right, so we got two holds. Any okay. others? No, I'd be ready to, uh, if anybody would like to make a motion to uh, approve the others. I don't know. Sure, so we're approving. One through seven. No, we're holding four, one, three, five, six. So we're, one, two, I, three, and five, and five. six. And seven, and... We're holding just four and seven, the consent. Four, okay. Do you need a motion? Yes, please. So a motion that we approve articles one, two, three, five, and six That's of correct. the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. Do I need to also say that we'll hold the others in the same motion? I don't think so. so. Fine. So, to approve those. Anybody second it? Second it. Okay. There we go. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. What is that? Five down and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a bunch more to go. Oh, seven down. We're in each other. Um,
Number eight and nine are the, uh, the budgets, and nothing to do about that right now. Uh, Article 10, I talked to the assessor's office about this, and they're, they're anticipating that they're going to get some, but not a whole lot of challenges from well-heeled corporate uh, uh, commercial clients in town. And so they need uh, money set aside to uh, do appraisals and maybe litigation at the Appellate Tax Board. Um, they're meeting right now. Um, Dan says that the amount of 75000 is probably way too high and that tomorrow he'll give me a, a better number. But that number should be around the $20,000 range. Number 11 is the Council on Aging Revolving Fund. And this is, establishes a new revolving fund for the Council on Aging to allow them to um, underwrite expenses associated with operating the Council on Aging ban. And it be uh, money that comes from riders of that van. And so they can spend up to $3,000 a year, and they can't keep more than $5,000 from year to year. And this, this is almost a housekeeping issue. It's a new one, though. It's a new. Yeah, it's a new one. I've had some talk with the uh, Board of Health. Mm -hmm. That might be something to look at them down the road as the same type of thing, revolving fund. They started, uh, you know. It's, it's just a, it's a conversation to have. Yeah, really. yeah. Okay. Uh, so, is this something we're comfortable with, or do you want to talk to the Council on Aging, or? Well, what are, is Council on Aging happy with this? What it would deserve? Yeah, uh, this this solves the problem for them. The they th this was their recommendation. This was. This was, this was the problem they brought to us, and Linda and I sat down and we came up with a solution. <coughs> so this solution is, um, addresses that problem. Okay. Collecting the money in, into an account, it hasn't been doing it. So there was a mismatch when in the changes of directors about how money was coming in and being spent, and we just had to codify the <laughs> address uh, how and when the money gets spent. Okay. There are just some, some changes on how things have been handled and um, this tightens things up. Okay. It seems fair. Seems I, I'm, does anybody else have any? So is it the money dedicated to maintenance of the vehicles? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and gas? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Gas and maintenance? I would be okay with this. Would we like to make? Would we like to do a vote on this now? Sure, sure. You don't see us any changes on this, right, David? I don't see any substantial okay. changes in this. Please I'll bring them to you if we do. Okay. Motion. Sure. Motion that we approve Article 11. Council of Aging is now saying Council of Aging revolving funds for their transportation. Second. Aye. Uh, all in favor? <laughs> yeah. Aye. Aye. All right, Article 12, this is a little bit more complicated. This uh, article requires free cash to be certified. We're still working with the Department of Revenue to get that done. I was really hoping to have that information for you tonight, but we're just going to have to be patient. But assuming that we get free cash certified in the amount that we're, used, we're figuring, and assuming that we're going to apply some of that free cash to the operating budget, uh, there will be a surplus of free cash left over. Uh, we intend to uh, store away as much free cash. Open door. Hi, you got something for us? This is terrible. Close the door. I need air. <laughs> close the door. <laughs> it's an open meeting. We can't close the door. Well, 
then don't close the door yet. <laughs> All right, carry on. Thank you. <laughs> so assuming everything goes well with the budget, we will have excess free cash, which we should put to productive use, and we should squirrel some of that away for next year. Um, so uh, the first thing we are uh, proposing is free cash for the unemployment trust fund in order to mitigate impacts of, of claims against the town for unemployment. Um, this is above and beyond about $33,000 in the operating budget for unemployment claims. The second is to transfer from wastewater reserves $211,000 back into the sewer impact fund. And some of you will remember that at the November 7th special town meeting we had to transfer from impact fees in order to underwrite this water budget. We promised at that town meeting that we would return that money and that's what that line there does. Free cash into the stabilization fund. Let's skip that one over for a moment and talk about the next one, which is crossed out. I just did that for illustration. Um, $200,000 of free cash into the capital stabilization fund. Uh, we talked about uh, increasing the debt payment for short-term borrowing by within the levy by $100,000 so that we could afford more capital projects than straight cash payments, very much in the way, same way Linda was speaking to the CPA last night. Of, you know, if you borrow rather than pay straight cash, then when the project is paid for, you don't lose that money, you have less of an impact. So. Uh, the select board wanted to add a lot to the capital stabilization fund, and I'm suggesting that because we're adding more than we're required to pay to the short uh, the short term principal debt service, that we've accomplished that task, and that you have more money to pay for capital projects than a one to one transfer of cash in there. So the next one is the Pension Unfunded Liability Stabilization Fund. Um, we have a pension system which assesses us. Uh, there is an unfunded liability in that pension fund, approximately $200 million. Our share of that is 5.5%, so call that $10 million, and they have us on a 13-year pay-down schedule. That amortization schedule increases over time. So every year you're paying more to amortize that debt, that unfunded liability rather, than in the year previous. So we know that this is going to show a spike in our retirement assessment year after year. And I think we can get ahead of it by putting in $75,000 a year for the next 13 years, I think we'll be able to overcome our portion of the unfunded liability within the pension system. What happens if we don't overcome our liability there? The pension system is required to uh, pay down their unfunded liability by law, unlike OPEP, where there's nobody actually telling you you need to do it. Uh, the pension system says you must pay this down, yeah. and you must pay it down within a particular time frame. Yeah. That time frame can be 10 years or 40 years, depending on the system. Our system is in pretty good shape, so they're doing 13 years. Um, so we're just going to see our, our costs for that pension system go up. Uh, and I think this is a way of mitigating that for the time. How about the other towns? Are they doing the same thing? They are not. I did talk to Amherst because together we would represent about 25% of the entire uh, system. 
Um, they were not interested in spending money on this. But this has emerged as, a, as an issue at the MMA trade show. And in fact, there was special training on this issue. Um, so other towns are beginning to, not around here, other towns are beginning to notice that unfunded liability from the pension system are hurting them. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is 75000 a year, and you're suggesting for how many years? For 13. 13. 13 years. And then to be used for then it comes out? Yeah. You're saying put in some extra. Yeah. Yeah. So my only concern is if the other towns can't pull their weight, does that mean the extra we put in won't count? We'll have to put in even more? Well, I tried to uh, work with the, uh, and I haven't given this up, but I've tried to work with the retirement system and said, is there a way for Hadley to pay more into the system and segregate that and just show it to the actuarials and say, Hadley is cutting down on, on its own, it's paying forward its unfunded liability, can you factor that in? They were not interested in having that conversation. Um, so this is the next best thing, is that we control that money. And so we're keeping the money here, Just in a, we're just going to pile it up, yeah. and at some point hopefully the state's going to order everybody to pay, and we'll have the money sitting there, and Amherst is going to go into Spasm and all the other the towns when they realize there's something being handed. That is, demand one, that is one outcome. Wait, I, oh, I missed that piece. We're yeah. keeping that extra money? Yeah, we're just yeah. putting Except it aside. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. We're, we're keeping it on board. We're not, yeah. because they will continue to bill us the same yeah. each year, regardless of whether we have set any money aside. Right. I'm, I'm just not sure what the, we're setting it aside and using it in order to pay those later bills, but if we're well, putting... Let me, let me grab... Um, let me grab when, the when does our money come out of this? Wherever I put it. Oh, here it is. Uh -huh. Well, once um, we put it in, you can't you can't use it for something else. Well, it's really uh, you can you take can back out. Uh, you can yeah, it's a special stabilization account, so it okay. can only use, be used for that purpose, and it. Um, uh, it requires a two-thirds majority uh, vote to use it, so it's a good way of protecting some free cash. It's like a rainy day fund. Like a rainy day. But it's fund. only for that purpose. Yeah, only for that purpose. So and until they, unless they come up with another solution. Yeah. So you know, whatever. Euthanasia. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this year, the total. This is for the whole system, not for us. So don't get a heart attack when we start talking about these numbers. Um, 17.6 million is the unfunded, the amortization of the unfunded annual li uh, accrued liability. Next year goes to 18.9. So 17.6 to 18.9. Then 19.7, then 20.5, then 21.3. Alright, this is additional that we're going to be paying on top of our pension costs in order to knock this uh, unfunded liability down. So every year goes up for the whole system, and our share of that's going to be about 5.5% of it. So, um, you know, it's a clear threat. It's going to be a death of by constriction. Um, right, but I mean, there's going to be a point, if nobody else is doing this, where these towns are not going to be able to, you know, they're going to get the demand note for, let's say, $25 million or something mm -hmm. each, and they're going to go, we don't have the money. So the state's going to have to come up with some other way to short-term it or, or loan it or put it out, and we'll be sitting on a pile of money and pay our share and or say, well, all right, well, let's just transfer the money out and take the, uh, the other, you know, they just offered us a better carrot, we'll go with that. Yeah. Yes. I'm not saying this is the best way to address this issue. Yeah. I'm more than happy to engage with you all to come up with a better way of building this. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not questioning this. I'm yeah. just saying that at some point, the, the state is going to suddenly go, everybody's got to pay. We're not getting money out of all these other towns. I mean, how many other towns are doing being proactive, at least setting aside money? We all know. Uh, well, the trade show, there are maybe 20 of them, but okay. 20 out of 351. Out of 351. So you've got 351 cities and towns that aren't doing a thing, and there's going to be a point where this bill is going to become impossible to not handle. The state's yeah. going to have to do something. 
Yeah. Right? And so they're going to go out and they're going to say everybody's going to have to go borrow the money or something. or And they may offer a really great solution for it that we might want to take. And then we've got all this money sitting here and we can transfer it back or use it towards the other or do it. But at least we've got the money. Unless they say, you guys don't get our help because you have the money. You're a rich town. Right. Well, they won't only, know. Only they, the ones I mean, they, they, the, the, they're not going to know we have this money, essentially, right? It's an internal well, it's fund. Public. It's, it's public. Yeah. Public okay. information. But okay. We can't hide it, but we're not right. going to Right. No, no, no. But I mean, you know, but I mean, they're going to come around. We're not sending them the money, though. Right. So essentially, we're going to be just like the 351 others that are making no payments towards this as far as the fund is concerned, correct? So Even far, though we're putting the money aside. Right. So far as they know. As far as they know, they're still not getting a check from us either. Right. So no, we're making point. a payment, right? We make we're, we're making a payment. Yeah. Payment, but yeah. not, not this extra. is additional not money, extra. Yeah. the extra. Mm -hmm. So at some point they're gonna have to somebody's finally gonna get the political will in Boston to deal with this unfunded mandate or unfunded um, uh, sorry liability. liability rather. Okay. And then they're gonna come to all three hundred and fifty one cities and towns and say, This is your share, mm -hmm. this is how you're gonna pay us and they're gonna come with some system or, 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 uh, or, you know, order or not. One, one possible outcome is what they did during the Great Recession, which was they allowed these uh, pension systems, particularly the ones in the East that really got themselves jammed up, yeah. they allowed them to extend their, their payment time frame from 20 years to 40 years. And that has the impact of artificially depressing the um, with the amortization, but my position is if you have a 40 year plan, you don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You know, right. You know, you need no, to I, I agree with what we're doing. I'm just saying that the outcome yeah. of it could be that we'll go in with the other towns and cities with whatever the state offers if it's a better position at that time for us, or would, yeah, if they're not going to give us credit for paying. Okay. I mean, if, if they go, we go in and say, okay, well, what if we do pay? Are we segregated? So our debt, mm -hmm. our over debt is, we've we paid our portion of the unfunded. If yeah. they're not going to give us credit for that, then why, why do it right. at that point? But at least we have the funds available. I mean, I think this makes a lot of sense. All right. Can you tell us how much we took out of stabilization, a regular stabilization in the fall, to because we didn't have the free cash? We took about two hundred and seventy thousand dollars out of stabilization for because that's what we used for the OPEP. And, and the year before that we took out about two hundred and sixty five thousand from stabilization for OPEP as well. Right. So but, we went to the OPEP twice. Well the last year was just because we would we had no intention of going for OPEP. Right, it was right. just because of free cash didn't come through. And we said, okay, my understanding was that wasn't the plan, wasn't to do the OPEP thing. It was just no, it was it, because it of the free so crash. I think that what we funded with the, uh, with the uh, I, I don't know the amount, but it's the amount we voted in the article to come out of free cash for the entire budget, David, was probably, was it just the OPEP amount or was it more? Um. I'll have to take a look at those numbers again, but I know that at least the OPEP. Might be able to find a line. Yeah, because we had a balanced budget thinking when we had the free right, cash, right? right, right? We right. went in thinking we had a balanced budget, Let's and then see. if the free cash didn't come in last minute, we had a plan, okay, well, this is just a temporary thing. Right. So the temporary thing you're saying, because I just don't remember, was 270000 out of the stabilization. I thought we were going to put the whole 270000 right back into the stabilization. Well, is it, is it and I know there's a two-year thing, but... It's not the 186. What is the 186? 186, 186 out of the 270. It's just well, that's let me, a let me, portion. Let me, let's, let's walk through the rest of this and then back into the 186. Cause oh, okay. There's a story there. All right. <laughs> All right. Free cash for police detail for the revolving fund established under... Okay, so we know that we have the Route 9 project coming up. We know that the police details, that, that we have a revolving fund, and I'll get the amount that we have right now. Um, but that revolving fund is going to be insufficient to cover the details for this Route 9 project. So I'm trying to build this up, so I'm putting $50,000 in there. Um, 
we should think about doing this over a three-year period in order to get that uh, balance up there. Is. Okay, and if I understand from the last conversation, what that has to do with is that we need to pay the police as they work. They don't. We don't get the money in from sometimes the construction or whoever's hired them. Mm -hmm. So, but we have to pay out that money. So you're creating a buffer for that. We don't have to pay out the money, but okay. really well, we want to. We don't want the really police to have to wait, you know, 90 days because, you know, contract payment on whatever didn't yeah. happen yet, right? Because then you don't get um, our people won't sign up also. Right, and we don't get to collect the 10 percent right. administrative fees. Understood. Okay, so, but in in theory, the money that we put into this fund after this major project it will be accumulated back through the fees that come in, correct? Yeah. So then we will be able to transfer it back at some point. You can. If if we don't have more big projects that we need to yeah. keep it going, right? Okay. I mean, so how much do we have? How much did we we already did this? We've done this three times already. So how much did we totally put in so far? I I need to check the blend on that. I can't remember. So I think we're up around forty. Yeah, I think we're up around forty thousand yeah. dollars. And you're saying you need they're going to need an additional another fifty on top of everything. Well, I'm thinking that they're going to need more than that. Throwing 50 out of this year. Well, yeah, it's, it, it feels like, though, I want to make sure that it's not just being because it's easy money that the, the collections aren't coming. If we're not billing, and, and, and I think we are. Well, yeah, yeah, we're, we've got a good system for billing and, and enforcing the billing. Because so it shouldn't, we shouldn't keep having an, to add to it, it almost doesn't seem like. But if there's just the one big project, it seems like it's almost like a credit line that's needed to make the coverage of the as the yeah, until they pay. Yeah, it's very much like it. a credit line. Right. Yeah, we did we, we did increase it within the past year once, and I and I don't think it, I don't know I can't remember what it was. It can certainly put something together on that. Yeah. John and I will we'll find out you know, what it had been, what we recently added, mm -hmm. and what um, we collected. What would? Yeah. Everything eventually gets collected. It's the lag time. No, no, yeah. yeah. So, um, but, okay. Why don't I make note that we'll put something together on that point? And then water reserves a transfer into the operating budget because of a uh, complication associated with the library uh, project. So that's discretionary. But if you if you take what I think we're going to use for uh, free cash for the budget, What's left over, you divvy it up through these uh, these plus the 75 for the assessors. That leaves you 186 for the stabilization. That's where that number comes from. It, it, it was, this is just my personal opinion. I, I'd rather see the 25,000 for the unemployment and the 75,000 for the pension. Add those two together, add it to the 186, put it all back in. We said we are going to take out of stabilization, but to put it back in. So my thinking is, at the time, last year, would or if even now, would you tell, would you say, would we pull out 25,000 out of our stabilization to fund this? Are we going to want to pull out 75,000 dollars out of our stabilization? So instead of putting over here free cash. We're not pulling it out of free cash. We're pulling it out of our stabilization because that's where it originally came from. You know, it's one of those things you bought. You, it's a savings account. You know, oh, I'm gonna use this because, but, and my pay will come in tomorrow. And then when it comes in, I'll put it right back. Oh well, this well, other thing came up, and I didn't get to put it back. You know. Yeah. So basically, where did it originally come from? It originally came from our stabilization account. Do we want to spend on out of our stabilization account and, and move things into these other buckets? These are things that are good, and, I, and I'm fine with that. But why? But the seventy-five thousand in the pension, it is staying in our fund. It is that. What's the difference between if it, if we put it, it leave, put it back to our stabilization where it belongs, or put it in this other stabilization? If we put it into this other stabilization, we are saying it's only for that purpose. Where if it's in our regular stabilization, it's stabilization. I don't. I, I, I'm. I'm just. I, I. I'm not a fan that we didn't put it back like we said we were going to put it back. We said we took it out. I wanted to put it back. I. I wouldn't want. I. Because I. At, at this point, if if this is how we're going to do things, I'm not going to be in favor of taking it out again because I'd be like, yeah, sure, because we don't put it back and we're not adding to it. 
We haven't been adding to it for a long time. David's said a couple times, he says, let's add to it. Let's add to it maybe just a little bit a couple times. And each time we're like, well, no, we have enough, and we haven't been adding to it. Uh, that is a firm thing against the select board. We're not adding to it because we have enough. We have to pay for what we've got. But at the same time, you know, I want to keep that strong. I don't want to take out of that. I just, I'm not comfortable. That, that's just my opinion. I wasn't comfortable about, uh, if we say we're going to put it back, I'd like to put it back. Does it's, any uh, amount get automatically put in that stabilization fund? No, we don't do any, and we just uh, keep taking from it. It grows by interest. Interest. Okay. Has the interest covered those uh, deductions? No. No. no so we're depleting still, it slowly. We, we, it's been slowly going we're, down. So how much is in there? Ooh, ballpark? Um, the, Somewhere between 1.9 and 2 million. Uh, not, it's not 2 million dollars. Okay. It's 1.94 or something like that. And has it gone down substantially over the years? Like what did it used to be? Substantially, um, I don't know that it's always ever What's been it over. Peak at? Do we know? I think it. Um, before we took out for OPEB a couple of years ago, it was at uh, somewhere to, uh, close to 2.2 million, I think. And for a while, we that. said we weren't going to go below the two. That, at one point, we were right. hoping then something. <laughs> yes. Um, right. Um, I would like to, I, I would treat unemployment trust fund differently. Can I explain what that sure. is a bit? Okay, so every year as a line, of, as a budget item, a part of those uh, insurance items that you pay the benefit, or the employee benefits and the retirement and medical uh, insurance, we pay one of those line items is unemployment insurance. We don't, I mean, when unemployment costs, we don't really have control over that. There may be people who, a lot, many people who file for unemployment one year and not another. So there are years that we have budgeted fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, and we've needed forty-five. So that's one of those end of the year scrambles. <coughs> this year we budgeted it up because it was so high, and we were looking for extra money last year. But we've had almost no claims this year. Maybe that will continue. So my thought at that time is rather than. The reaction would be, okay, then move it down next year, but it could go up again. So that we would use the unemployment trust fund, and unlike stabilizations, it doesn't need a vote to come out. We have that as a trust fund, and we do have one. It's just down to $2,000 now, and we haven't fed it for a few years. So I was thinking this year, I think it's $25,000 we've put in that account, and we've only spent five. Why don't we take that extra amount, and instead of turning it, having it roll back in to free cash, move that over to the trust fund. And David said, well, it's more direct if you just do it, fund it right out of free cash rather than say we're going to take this money and put it over there, have it all roll back to free cash and set it up. And that way from year to year we can budget like this. We can budget the same amount for unemployment every year mm -hmm. and, um, and not be looking for extra money. We can keep it at a lower amount knowing that we've got the trust fund, the trust fund as backup. So that frees up, if we were able to keep that at 10000 knowing that we've got you know, maybe 40000 sitting in the trust fund and keep the budget at 10000 that's more money available for your other budgets mm -hmm. in that year. So that's a little different. In a trust fund you don't, that you don't go to town meeting having it vote out of, uh, voted uh, in order to take, take the funds out. But the other stabilization funds do fit into that category. You were saying we could have it in this one or that one. And the difference between the stabilization funds is whether their purposes are restricted or not. But they all would take a two-thirds majority at town meeting to come out. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that gets you back to your, <coughs> where you were. But I would just say that about the unemployment. I think so, that's important. So clearly we're not in a place where we can make a recommendation tonight, but I did want to talk about this because this is a complicated article and it mm -hmm. ties into <coughs> the number of things that are going on in the budget. Yeah. I, would you like? I can do a report on stabilization over the last few years if you like that. Is, is mm -hmm. there a precedent of money coming out of stabilization going to free cash, then going into these new funds? Has that been done before, or would this be kind of a new? The only uh, one, uh, the only change of from stabilization going to another fund that I can recall is the one where we used it to fund OPEB one year. And the reason was that OPEB was on the chopping block to not be funded that year. Yeah, because we didn't have enough in the operating budget. Because so. we added to the ambulance. Mm -hmm. 
So honestly, OPEB is a better investment for the town than stabilization fund, literally. Yeah. I mean, it, we can we can invest it, and it's uh, more aggressively, and it is, it is one of our best investments. And it, it does help in so many other ways. We win so many type ways. So it was worth it to, it, we did better for our money taking it out of stabilization and putting it OPEB, but as a, as a, as a, plan going forward it is not something that we want we to said repeat. that was a one-time mm -hmm. thing. we did say that <laughs> one time thing we're not going to do this again it's not a, it's not something we're going to use our stabilization to fund our operating budget and it, it was a one-time thing at the very last minute we decided to do it just because it was a better investment at the time so, <clears throat> but then, then we did it again <laughs> and, but but you, we didn't my understanding was is we didn't really in my head it wasn't just for OPEB. It was, yes, maybe that was what the big, that's the biggest number. But what we did it for was because we didn't have the free cash. We had a balanced budget going in. Mm -hmm. Without funding OPEB. But it was funding OPEB that helped get us that AAA rating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But we had a balanced budget. And then it's the free cash that was not ready at town meeting. Oh, this year. Yes. This year. This year. This year. Okay, I thought you were back the two years. No, it was just this year. So I don't really consider it. We did it twice. I, I, I mean, last year was purely because of we didn't have the free cash money. Can I ask like, a, a larger question about the stabilization? Where does that money get parked? What's like the investment vehicle for that? Um, and what does it generate? We have, it in, we have investment companies that we use. Um, that one is at Rockland. Rockland Trust. Okay. Is it like an index fund or? Um, like yes, yes. Um, I can't remember. Uh, I'm mean, happy to give you a report of the uh, the money markets and stocks and various things that we're allowed to put that into, and it does do well. I mean, if these are, I would be, you know. Um, they do. I mean, what do you want to come by and see? Uh, we we can go through how it's. Uh, before I saw, um, you had a, it was a nice little sheet that you had listed, and it's just an uh, mm -hmm. estimates of this was CPA money, and this was the stabilization money, and this is about where we invest in, this is how much we made. And, and okay. I think you had that once. Maybe we can so get in that. The, it goes in the annual report each yeah. year. Great, and then we can yeah. see that again, and then I'm going to show that to CPA because that was, I thought that was excellent. Right, okay. It, it, okay. To see how much money yeah, we're actually yeah, making. Sort of right. yeah. Great reports that Rockland Trust puts together. Uh, yeah. I'm sure. Can right. share and Bartholomew. Yes, we can yeah. share. We can share any of that. We have Bartholomew between Bartholomew and Rockland. We, we that's where we have our uh, town trust funds and our um, OPEB and cap, uh, stabilization account. I'm missing one. It's rather big. CPA. CPA. <laughs> CPA. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, the, in, if you That's remember the trend reports that I gave you when we first met of the season, in there you'll find a statement about stabilization. So you'll see a five-year history of stabilization, both in terms of its percentage to net operating revenues, as well as actual amounts within stabilization. So, if you dig up that document, it will have it. All right, so Article 13. All right, Article 13 is a huge amount of capital stuff that I just got at the last minute. And it comes to more than $7.5 million. Sure. And I said to the department, what are you guys, nuts? <laughs> you know, we can't, we can't throw that on the annual town meeting. <laughs> so my recommendation is that I need to meet with the departments, trim this up a lot, and let's see what we can do to defer a lot of this to the fall town meeting when we can focus in on capital. Oh, yeah. That public works is gone. Yeah. They're going for it. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good for them. <laughs> I really don't think... I, 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 I'm sorry, I... Until we actually deal with the issues we have at Public Works, I'm yeah. not in favor of doing anything else um, for new equipment there. I'm we, not really in line with what's happening in Public Works. I know some people were upset about like the mower, but well, th what's going on is they are in trailers. They're in these 
things that these temporary trailers have been there for years and years and years. You go in there, you should we can you can get a tour. We the three of us went on tour. Yeah. Okay. It was so the the smell in there, the the atmosphere in there, it the stuff goes through the walls. I wouldn't sit in there for a minute to do, if I had to do a break. It was not it is not fair to our employees to have people sitting in there. It is terrible conditions. Terrible. And I think we have just our, you know, our cold air is going out the, the uh, you know, through the wall. Same with the heat and everything else. It's just, it's a terrible situation that they have there. Never mind, um, we don't have a wash bay, right? So we have all this stuff that's going on the roads. And we don't even, we don't have a wash bay to clean up our stuff. So we need to take care of, we need to better take care of what we have. Make sure our stuff is going to last. Keep it clean. And get, you know, relook at the, at the public works before we do anything else. The last time I listened to a lot of the stuff that they had um, or requests, like a Vactor truck, like some of these, you, I know we could use all these things, but you can actually hire people to do these. How often are we using these that we need these on a regular basis that we need to clean these and store these and have these every year? Hire out maybe. Maybe that's a better solution. I, I, Historically, have they done like this every year? I mean, this seems big. No, it's, I've never seen a capital request like this. Out of courtesy to the departments, I put it down here, but... You know, you've got to trim the soil on this yeah. one. And for us to make an informed recommendation, I mean, we would need so much more information. Yeah. All I see, this is and it needs to go through capital. Yeah, right. First, I mean, the capital planning committee coming up with a 10-year capital plan. I don't know how many of this is on the 10-year capital plan, but um, some of it is. Okay. And the, and um, the sewer rates don't even begin to cover plus the sewers, correct? Operation. Sewer rates right. are in trouble. It looks like most of this, the larger ones, are water. So there might be a possibility of getting a. He, I mean, he's, he was saying the, the main repli the replacements that need to happen throughout the town. So it sounds like a taking that as a separate chunk and uh, how much money, maybe similar to what David Fizzell did for CPA last night. How much can we borrow that would be paid out of water receipts um, in a year, and how many millions can they borrow just right out of water and handle yeah. handle smoothing out some of these projects over time, so that there's an ongoing uh, that the projects continue to happen. We get started on them, and that they happen, and we're not seeing um, all these projects on at once, but they're being addressed in a uh, planned fashion. So my recommendation to the finance committee is to. Pass this on to the capital planning committee. Have them come up with a solid recommendation and a fuller explanation as to what these these are, uh, and then have them report back to you, and then you make the recommendation at that time. Now, does this have anything to do with because this is the year for uh, DPW? This is their year. You know how we focus on every year we work on. A department? Well, I, th I think it's admirable that he put down everything that he could think of so that we won't forget okay. to fund something. Um, okay. I didn't know if that was it. So, and, and down below it says about South Maple Street water main replacements. Now, I didn't know that was this coming year we are doing that. I thought that that project's not going to start for another year, uh, you know, another you're, you're talking about the, um, the, the, the nine year widening plan. project? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is something separate from the widening project. We have tuberculated pipes on South Maple Street. We don't have enough water pressure in those lines, certainly not enough to fight a fire with. Mm. So we have uh, we have to replace those lines at some point. Whereabouts are they on South Maple? Are they what we're, they're, they're not in the part that we're going to be replacing? No, this, this would be south of the uh, bike path. So where it's mostly farms? Yeah. Farms and houses, houses. on the, uh, on the, on the uh, southernmost part of that, where it connects to Bay Road. And these are the kind of projects which I wouldn't mind putting money towards, like, you say you want, we want to put money towards, like, um, 
unfunded some of these like seventy five thousand dollars we put was a recommendation to put towards this it's savings we're going to keep putting towards it well how about something we do is something like this for our maintenance that i mean i talked about maintenance before for our buildings but how about the maintenance for uh, for this type of thing we need to have a, uh, something that we're that we're not getting whacked two million five hundred thousand at once and we're putting money for these maintenance every year so would i be Start a dpw fund would I be okay with, okay, let's put a, a hundred, another hundred, another hundred, or just start funding it, but to get whacked with, you know, $22 million, but we, but we have to, but we're going to eventually need to do it, so do I want to say we're going to do this? No. Well, we can't do $2,500,000, but, but do we want to ignore it? No. We so need to do something, some, right? We can't ignore it either. So on the project of that magnitude, we'd certainly have to explore SRF funding for that. So it would be a subsidized loan from the state, 2% interest, 20-year payback. Would um, that be a debt exclusion team? No. Type of thing? No. Mm -hmm. Well, it could be. Well, it we could wouldn't want I mean, if it was, uh, you know, we've talked about, but it, it would be probably paid out of water receipts would be our basic yeah, and if it yeah. exceeds what water rates could handle we could do a portion it's been done in the past Callahan Wells is partly out of taxation and partly out of receipts right um, right right that's right yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, it's a nice sort of do we ever get to see some of this itemized is that like when we sit down with the individual departments we could see like what the 2.5 actually breaks out to um, I've never seen for it. yeah I've we never really it. seen them but we can ask them a little bit more details because he's going to sit down with us mm -hmm. and that's something we can ask him. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's cast iron pipe. I think it's four inches in that area. And what happens is anaerobic organisms adhere to the inside of the pipe and start restricting it. And that's why you lose water pressure and water flow. Um, so it's basically a clogged artery. What is your recommendation on these, David? You say we need these, but I'm looking at these dollar amounts. What, what are you thinking? I think you should just give it to capital. And let them mm -hmm. Yeah, but that, that, I want to know what our recommend is. This is finance. I mean, that's what. What is your? I we it will go to capital, but just it curious. It hasn't presented yet. You can't make a decision by that. Huh? Oh, right. Yeah, I mean, you can't make decisions either. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there, there are basic questions here, just about, above of affordability. There's basic questions about um, yeah. management bandwidth. All right, so it looks like, based upon the ask, that we're talking about five major water line replacement projects in one year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we have the wherewithal to pull that off. Maybe one, yeah. not five. Beyond money, you're saying, just yeah. the ability. Yeah, I mean, the equipment, the human power, uh, oversight. the oversight. We don't have that kind of personnel to supervise five projects of that magnitude. Did Marlo tell you about these? Did you know about these with Marlo? Some of these have been on the books since before Marlo's days. So some of these are based upon a capital plan for water that was done a long time ago. We know, we know that we have a hundred year old pipe in mm -hmm. certain areas of the town that needs to be replaced. Well what are we going to do about when, we, when Route 9 starts to widen and we start that project um, and we have to replace the whole Route 9? Where are we going to, I know that a lot, it's not going to cost us half as much because the town is, I mean because the state is going to be digging up the stuff, but we still have to do a lot. Of, it's going to cost us something yeah. to replace all that. Yeah, so there are a couple of places to go for that. First of all would be SRF uh, funding. We've begun to talking to David Eisenthal about that. The other place would be the Environmental Bond Bill, um, which is a state fund. It's risky because the state may not choose the project. Uh, another place to go would be Mass Works Grant, um, and I know that there was a multi-million dollar Mass Works Grant done for the town of Hudson, Massachusetts, um, very similar to the project that we're looking at here. If we can tie it into economic development, 
that project would be eligible for several million dollars worth of grant funds. Well, so, so package. Okay, so we got package. a lot of stuff. Can we start putting away for some of this? And heck, if we got all the grant funding and we didn't need to use any of it, well then, great, we can spend it on something else, but can we start putting away for what we, you know, I just don't want us to be surprised. We're going to have to come out of somewhere, you know. Yeah. You do have water reserves that equal about 95% of your operating budget, which is very close to the target that was set for it. So yeah, it's 90, well, how much is the water reserve set now? I know you said 95. About a million bucks, a million, million two. Okay, so uh, do you feel like that's going to be enough if the, something like this needed to be done? It seems like, so I know sewer, sewer reserves, we've we've had troubles with, so maybe we need to start putting money into water reserves down the road. Yeah, so water reserves is a good place to invest this money for future future projects. Sewer reserves need to be built up. Um, they're about a third of what they should be. So the pipes that we are doing, all, uh, replacing down Main Street, is it just when we on Route 9 will it only be the water or will we be replacing water and sewer? Water and sewer. Okay. Okay. So I just wanted to know. I so I think in just right now my opinion is is and, and that's probably what I'll be going to CPA. I mean, um, capital with is that I wouldn't be in favor of a lot of this stuff. I'd be in favor of putting money away. You know is going for the grants, going for all those things that you've talked about, mm -hmm. and then whatever, and then maybe try, if they, if, if we need to start, we think that we need to start putting a rainy day <coughs> set aside, maybe putting some extra money into water reserves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The front part of capital expenses, this looks like the same stuff that just got voted down on. How, how often does it come, does that, does that happen a lot where it gets yeah, voted down and we put it back and we... Uh, you can take the school bus off, they're deferring that for a year. Okay. So school bus is back. Well, like generator and IT for the school is all... Generator, the they, they, they really, the select board really want the, uh, the uh, they really want the, uh, the generator. generator. And the school would like IT to be at 60000 so that's a correction I should make. So what was the sense from why it got voted down in the fall and why we think it's going to get passed this time around? Well, we wouldn't we wouldn't put it on a dead exclusion the second time. Okay, so the it would have to be voted on to just yeah, be town meeting? The voters gave a very clear message that they didn't want to see a dead exclusion on these items. They've said no, but we've heard. We'll Pay for it in another way. Okay. That, that exclusion adds to the taxes. When you do it within the levy, it stays within the budgeted items. So you're, you're, you may be moving other things aside to pay for it within the budget. And that's why we're going to increase the debt and exclusion amount, and the, uh, the debt and interest payment portion of the budget by 100000 to accommodate more borrowing within the levy. Thank you. Understood. So, All right, so Article 14, how long did you all want to go tonight? <laughs> yeah, this is the bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're pretty I much just, almost done, right? That's pretty much it. This is any article. This is something that you asked for. Yes, <laughs> it is. You can't give up now. <laughs> well, my theory was, it's why we have, I looked at most of the other towns in the state, and they're all after town meeting. Elections are after town meeting. So why is ours before town meeting? The other thing is, if we have to, any of our things that have to go to a vote, say it does have to go to a vote, say it was debt exclusion, then we have to have another um, thing where people would come. So that's, that's, people have to come to vote for that, then they come to a town meeting, then they have to come and vote again. So yeah. just some guy can't be able to get to the end. Yeah. Plus, if you're going to have a, you know, here's, let's use Molly Keegan, for instance, okay? She's doing all this, right? She's working on all this, and, and then she's going to be leaving, and we're getting someone new. So we get someone new right before we have the town meeting. 
And Molly's the one that voted for all this, not the new person. Right. You know? Makes sense. It's just, I don't know. So Unless you can tell me another I think, reason. I think you just made the case. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we just did it. Motion? Yeah. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve Article 14. I'll second it. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> and I think you and can I find we, reasons that sense. We'll call it Amy's motion. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You'll get your own. <laughs> Alright, so just, just a comment that I'm setting it up for not this coming year, but yeah. next year, 2022, because okay. we have special le legislation that's tied into this coming year. So, something already in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Alright, the rest are CPA articles, and we don't have any uh, direction from CPA at this point. Okay. And we can't get them to pay to restore antique pipes. Because you know the the state go. restored the bridge with the potholes. So you know, this, the new, our our Coolidge Bridge has got its traditional potholes in the same places that it had before. So they did a historic preservation of that also. Yeah. Well, whatever you do, don't call it maintenance. Right. Oh my gosh, I learned that last night. That was the very good part of that meeting. Restoration buzzword to go by. No, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> not that, was a, that was an interesting meeting. <laughs> okay. So good work, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, okay. I'll call that uh, any. All in favor for the meeting to be adjourned? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>